Welcome back to another video on the no input mixing board. Today I'm going to be talking about the source matrix, the alternate outputs on the Mackie 1202, and some of the advanced routing options that we have with these tools. So first off, what are the alternate outputs on the 1202 VLC? Along the back of the mixing board here, next to the channel inserts, there are a 3-4 alt output and a control room left and right. These send out a different mix from the mixing board than what we hear on main mix, and that's controlled by the source matrix and the mute buttons. The alt 3-4 take any channel that would be muted and instead route them out this alternate output. There's no true muting on the Mackie 1202, but instead a rerouting away from main mix. The control room outputs take whatever we hear through the source matrix here, the level of which is controlled by this control room phones fader here, and it outputs that combination of sounds out the control room outputs. Let's start by patching up two, three, four, five. the alt 3-4 outputs here. Listening to these outputs as we turn them up, I'm going to set trim to unity. We hear nothing, because right now, nothing is being routed out of the 3-4 outputs into these channels. When we mute these channels, now they're creating feedback loops, but because they're muted, we no longer hear them in the main mix. Now, if I engage Alt 3, 4 on the source matrix here, we will start to monitor the levels for the Alt 3, 4 here, and we can see that we are indeed producing a feedback loop worth of sound here on this feedback loop. I can use this button here, assign to main mix, to take what we're listening to in the source matrix and now using the control room phones here, we can start to listen to a bit of that signal. I think this is a great opportunity to talk a little bit about stereo processing with the mixing board. Uh, when we have these left and right channels and we're controlling how we're sending things between them, we can start to play with the panning in order to create a wider signal as we vary these feedback loops a little bit. And you can hear as the panning gets wider between the two, the two channels diverge as the content of the channels becomes more distinct on each side of the feedback loop. The source matrix can be assigned to the main mix as we heard, but it is also running out the control room left and right inputs here. I'm gonna take one of those, I'm going to turn back on our feedback not assigning it to main mix now. And as I turn this up, we are sending the alt 3-4 via the source matrix out the control room left input here and into channel five. I just wanna cover some of these more complicated parts of the routing on the 1202 as a baseline to understand some of the more complex patching that we can do with this. The three inputs to the source matrix are main mix, alt 3, 4, and tape, the tape inputs up here. As I've shown in other videos, I really like to use these tape inputs and tape outputs to construct that total feedback loop. So turning this down, the tape inputs go into the source matrix. The tape outputs are the main mix out. 
So we have a very simple way of getting this total feedback by just routing tape into main mix. On its own, this isn't very interesting, but acting as a distortion processing the other channels, this starts to get very interesting. The final bit of complex routing information that I want to cover are these pre-fader solo buttons down here underneath the mute buttons. What these do is these replace the output of the source matrix with a pre-fader solo version of the channel that you select or the collection of channels that you select. So to show you what I mean, I'm going to construct a feedback loop here on channel one. I'm going to route that into our three, four alt channels by muting it. And I, we're going to listen to that now. I'm going to take these three, four channels here and use them to further distort that sound. And now I'm going to engage the pre-fader solo. And what's going to happen is instead of listening to channel one plus the feedback loops of channel three and four in the source matrix, we're going to listen to just channel one in the source matrix. Adding in our feedback channels using these pre-fader solos now sounds like this. And now you can start to see how between the pre-fader solos, the mute switches, the routing switches that we have here, we have a lot of performance opportunities to quickly and discreetly change the routing configuration on the Mackie 1202. So now as a final demonstration with some of these routing options that we have on the mixing board, I've patched up another channel uh, in a standard feedback loop. And I want to show how using the mute and the pre-fader solos lets us create sudden performable shifts in the sound that we're producing using the mixing board as a no input instrument.
I hope that this gives some further inspiration and ideas for how you can patch a no input mixing board to take advantage of more complex routing options as well as discrete performable switches on your mixing board.